Welcome back folks to Let's Replay Beneath the Steel Sky and when last we left off you may be wondering what we're doing back here. The answer is, we're progressing the plot because there's a conversation topic that only becomes available after you get the jammer installed onto your card that you need to ask about. You'd think that there wouldn't be anything else to talk about with Anita, considering that getting the jammer onto your card ends the conversation. But no, you need to talk to her again, and this is something that I forgot about, much like how I didn't realise you had to do this when I first played the game. I got stuck here for quite a while. So let's ask the all-important question, will the jammer get us into Link Space? If you think the answer is no, you're already ahead of the game. Will the jammer get me into Link Space? No, the only access is through the special interface. There's just one little problem. You'll need to get a Schreiberman port. That sounds painful. Care to elaborate? How do I get a Schreiberman port? Well, you'll have to undergo surgery. I need that like I need a hole in the head. The Schreiberman port is a hole in the head. Well, this thing is sounding worse the more you talk about it. Let's talk about the security of Link itself instead, so that we don't talk about getting holes drilled in our head. Does Link have any internal security? They'll be foils, naturally. What are they? Intrusion foil program. Are they dangerous? Well, standard IFPs are simply deterrents, but some high-level foils can be lethal. Good to know! And now the most important question. How can you understand the person in that suit? I certainly can't. Can you understand the guy in the suit? Not in the least. I don't think he can hear me either. That's reassuring, considering all of the illegal stuff that we've been talking about. Let us leave and head down to Bellevue. We have a lot of leads that we can pursue down there. First and foremost, going into Lamb's apartment and feeding the cat. We will be feeding the cat, it is entirely optional to do so, but we're not there to do that, we're there to get something else. Hello Lamb, how are you? Are you deliberating about your current situation? Oh, it's so unfortunate, isn't it, that you somehow got delinked and all of your assets were frozen. I wonder who could have done that? It certainly wasn't me. It was totally me. We need to wait for Joey to appear, as Joey being with us in Bellevue is essential to us solving the critical puzzles. Not getting into Lamb's apartment, because Joey won't go in. But the other puzzles, we need Joey. So let's go down. Come on, Joey. Come along, Joey. I know you're rather slow. That's kind of a consequence of the uh, body that you have and the welder body that we put on top of that body. Not surprising that you're rather slow. We are now here, in the slightly more jolly and... No, it's not jolly at all. Not even slightly. Let's go over here and pop into Lamb's apartment. One thing to note, to get this authorization through, they must have authorized the card that we have to gain us access to Lamb's apartment, and this is Reich's card. Surely alarm bells must have rung, but no, apparently it's all fine. Curious. I wonder what happened there. Either way, we are now in Lamb's apartment. And it is a lot nicer than Reich's apartment, and there are lots of things that we can look at. There's an armchair, a monitor, a VCR, a machine, lots of paintings, the cat, this bookcase, and a very obvious item that I'm going to look at last. First, the armchair. That looks comfortable and inviting. Let's have a sit down. I dare say we've earned one. The cushion is covered in grease and cat fur. Or maybe not. Let's look at the VCR instead. It's got more buttons than a maternity dress. Can we use it? Robots I can program, but not video machines. Fair enough. The monitor? Might have guessed Lamb would have a TV screen like that. Big, showy, and ostentatious. That it is. And we don't know how to turn it on. Let's look at the cat. What a fat cat! Hello, puss. 
Lamb did say that the cat likes to be pampered. Let's try and pamper the cat. I better not stroke it. It might scratch me. That's a good point. Let's look at the painting. I'd like that if it wasn't for the fluffy sheep. Can we take it? No. What about this painting? The artist must have been on something. Are you saying that you don't like the painting, Foster? That's pathetic. I could do better. The artist must have been on something. What about this painting? That's pathetic. I could do better. And then Foster did better. Got some paper, got some paints, and then whipped up a piece of art. No, that doesn't happen. I don't think Foster has a very high opinion of the art in this apartment. Let's look at the bookcase. I didn't picture Lamb as a reader of books. What books are they? They're fake, just empty cardboard boxes. Non-existent books, that's what they are. There's one thing here that we need to get, and that is the video cassette. It's titled Pussies on Parade. Let's not think about the title and instead just grab it and examine it in our inventory. The videotape is standard VHS format, and there's the title, Pussies on Parade. Against our better judgement, let's use it on the VCR and see just what it's about, shall we? I've never been more relieved to see a video of cats. And we get the video cassette back. This game saying that video cassettes are the future for shows and the like. Unfortunately, they got that a little bit wrong. Just a little. There's this machine as the final thing that we can use here. Let's look at it. It's a food dispenser. Why not see if it works? And it does. And off the cat goes to eat. That is entirely optional, by the way. You don't have to do that whatsoever. But I felt like feeding the cat. We've done everything we need to there, so now we're going to head off to Burke's Biosurgery, where we're going to have a long conversation with Burke. If that is, we can get in to the surgery. We tried before, but we don't have a booking. I imagine we don't have the money to get a booking. I doubt using our stolen ID card is going to help us in this endeavour. But we can try and get a booking by just asking. It could work. We'll have to talk to the hologram to make that happen. Hello, how are you? We like a port. I want a Shriebman port. Your name, please? Robert Foster. There's little chance of seeing the doctor. Why not? I have instructions not to disturb him. Unless you wish to pay cash, of course. We probably don't have enough money. Can we ask again? Can anyone else do it? Can anyone else supply the port? Oh no, the service is unique to Dr. Burke. Well, that's not good to hear. Pretty please? Nope, nothing we can do here. I'm just looking. Thanks. Please take one of our brochures. I don't think we'll be doing that. The key to getting into here is Joey. Why don't you try talking to the hologram? Try talking to that hologram, Joey. What for? I need to see the doctor. And she won't let me in. What shall I say to her? There are a number of options here. Let's go with the ones that are wrong first. Use your imagination. Do I have to? She gives me the creeps. It's only a hologram. Surely you can outwit it. Let's see if this works. It's going to take a while for you to get round that table, though. It's a shame Foster doesn't move. Hi, my name's Joey. Well, that didn't work, did it? Let's try that again. 
Try chatting up the hologram again. Didn't you see what happened? She ignored me. You were probably being too familiar with her. Try to be more businesslike. What do you want me to say? Why don't we try and persuade her? Try to persuade her to open the door. Why don't you forget about the operation? I can't. I need that port. My human friend needs to see the doctor. That's not possible at present. That's a shame. I was looking forward to being alone with you. Forget it. I've heard about you welders. Well, that didn't work either. There's only one more choice now. Who wants to bet it's the right one? Try chatting up the hologram again. This is the last time, Foster. What do you want me to say? The only thing that you can. Use your natural charm on her. I've got an idea. I'll try the subtle approach. Hey, you! Open that door! I take my orders from Dr. Burke. I take mine from Oberman. Oh! Why didn't you say so before? Good grief. That was the subtle approach? Throwing around the name Overman? It's a good thing it worked. And it's a good thing nobody has caught on to you using the word Overman there. We might have security here very quickly. Time to go in. Welcome to Berg's Biosurgery. There are lots of things to look at, and a procedure that Burke is currently doing to somebody who's conscious. Let's look at the charts. It's an old phrenological diagram. Can we take it? No. What about the scanner? A body scanner. Seems advanced. It's connected to the computer. So we probably have to have somebody using the computer for it to work. What about the chart? It's a guy with his skin cut off. Can we take it? I don't think he'd want to, even if we could. There's a chair and an ominous looking helmet here as well. What a chair! It's a masterpiece in upholstery. Let's take it, Foster. We can sit in it at least. Get comfortable, Foster. You're going to be sitting in that chair in a little bit. But not right now. We have things to do. Things to look at. It's operated via the computer. Like this that I accidentally right-clicked before I left-clicked. That looks ominous and scary. Oh, it's ominous indeed. What about the machine? A diagnostic computer. What does it diagnose? We don't know, but there are gas cylinders here, and it seems like Burke is using the gas quite a bit. Surely that's supposed to be for his patients. Most likely. If I sniff that, I might end up like the doctor. You might. Let's talk to the patient? Once he moves. There we go. Poor devil. Hello there. You're conscious. Oh, yes. Why are you conscious? You don't look so good. Well, thanks very much. Full marks for your bedside manner. Have you brought me any grapes? No. I'm afraid not. Oh, thank goodness for that. Grapes make me feel quite squeamish. They remind me of eyeballs. That makes you squeamish? Have you not looked at your situation? I'm trying to escape from the city. Is that so? I need a Shreebman port. You don't need a surgeon. You need your head examined. No, I'm pretty sure we need our head examined by the surgeon. Do you know anyone called Overman? I've never heard of him. Fair enough. I have to go now. Drop by again sometime. I'm sure we will, but first, we need to talk to you about a few more things. If there are any more topics to talk about, which there don't seem to be. Nope, nothing. I have to go now. 
Drop by again sometime. So the only person we can talk to is Dr. Berg. Hello, Doctor. Excuse me. How are you? Don't make me jump like that. Sorry, didn't realize you were busy. Just practicing. I like to keep my hand in. What can I do for you? I need a Shreveman port. Really? Do you have sufficient credit? All I've got are the clothes I'm wearing. In that case, you require the easy pay scheme. Yes, that sounds perfect. Kidney, lung, or testicles. What? what Which organ do you wish to sell? I'm not selling anything. No parts, no port. Send in the next customer. Oh! Okay, so the only way we're going to get one of the ports is to sell one of our organs. There's no way to avoid doing so. We don't have the credit, we don't have any other way to pay for the port. So, let's get this over with. Excuse me. Let's suggest the kidney first, shall we? We, we have two of them after all. Maybe I wouldn't miss a kidney. I'll have to run some tests. Stand behind the scanner, please. So far, so good. Turn around, please. <laughs> I can't use either of them. Why not? They're too good to sell at second hand. I'd have to overprice myself to be profitable. You make money by trading people's organs? What else would I do with them? Open a restaurant? So, kidneys aren't an option. Excuse me. We could live without one lung? I suppose I could spare a lung. Let's have a look at them first. On the scanner? Yes, please. Let's see if this will work. Hold still, please. <laughs> Has someone been experimenting on you? Why do you ask that? I've never seen a body quite like yours before. I'm afraid I can't use them. Is there something wrong? Tell me, Doc, I can take it. You're simply too healthy. Most bodies would reject your organs. Oh dear. Well, there's only one option left. Excuse me. One choice. I guess I've no choice, Doc. I'll have to sell you my... It's not as bad as you think. When I said I'd take your testes, I meant after your death. That's a great consolation. All I require from you now is your consent. Take a seat, please. How bad could the procedure be? Uh, do you use local anesthetic? Oh, no! It doesn't hurt. Any more than having your ears pierced. In that case, I need a general anesthetic. You now have a Schriebman port. You may experience headaches, but don't worry, it's quite normal. Well, we got the port. And we didn't have to give anything up, because joke's on you, Burke. We're going to be long gone by the time you can take that payment. Excuse me. Is there anything else we can talk about? Yes, a lot, actually. Your receptionist certainly is strange. That's my wife you're talking about. You're married to a hologram? She wasn't a hologram when we read. She died last year, but I decided to keep her. Doesn't the fact that she's dead distress you? No. She's a lot less trouble than when she was alive. Oh. Let's ask about getting to ground level. Maybe Burke can help.
Can you get me to ground level, Doc? I have my reputation to consider. If you're determined, you might ask my friend Willy. Just tell him I sent you. He has a rather special policy. So we've had Lamb and Burke direct us over to the uh, insurance place. Whose recommendation do we use? I can think of one I'm not going to use. I've had a bad knock on the head. Any after effects? Yeah, pain. Impairment of vision? I keep seeing flying saucers. Any dizziness? Yeah, I can hardly stand. You know, I get exactly the same myself. I wish I knew what causes it. Well, that's not comforting at all, especially to the person currently lying on this table. Thanks again for the port, Doc. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Let's get out of here, before he reconsiders taking the payment now. And so, when we come back, folks, as soon as uh, Joey gets out of the way, there we go. When we come back, folks, we now have the port that we need to get access to Link Space. The only downside is we don't have a way to get into Link Space, as we don't know where one of those special interfaces is. Except there may be one in the security tower. Hmm. But when we tried to get in there, we got turned into a pile of ash. We'll have to think of another way in. A more subtle way in. Or maybe a less subtle way in. And so, I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. And the less said about what happened in there, the better, eh? All the better.